Hi there, let's get right into it. To call up the table ACDOCA, we navigate to transaction code SE16H. That's SE16H. By the way, you could also do it via transaction code SE16 or also SE16N. However, I recommend you to use this new transaction code, which is available under SAP S4HANA. Over here, we can search for our table. In this case, I will just type in AC. DOC and then an asterisk because I want to show you something. Let's click here on the search help, click on table and over here you can see the different tables the system found based on my entry. Most importantly over here are the tables ACDOC A, so the universal journal entry line items and we will focus on this table extensively in this video. Then you can see over here ACDOC P which is for plan data line items, so all the planning values and also AC doc U over here, which is for group journal entries. So this here is used for the group reporting solution of SAP for consolidation purposes. Okay, we will take a look at AC doc A first. So click on this one and then we will hit on enter. Over here you can see now all the available fields in this particular table. And as you can already see, 500 entries over here. So this table stores a lot of information. Let's actually execute to view the details and over here you can see the details of the AC Doc A table. So basically this table stores all the relevant line item information for financial documents and those financial documents could be either from finance or also from controlling or internationally called managerial accounting. We will now go through the most important columns over here. So first of all you can see here the ledger. This is because in the SAP s hana world we can use the ledger approach to post financial documents. Meaning that when we post financial documents we can select a ledger if necessary. And we do so to, for instance, distinguish between postings we make in our local accounting principle and our global accounting principle. So locally means the accounting principle applying for your country and globally would be, in most of the cases, the IFRS accounting principle. So here you can see right now this here is my leading ledger 0L. Also I could find here other ledgers as you can see. Then we have the company code the document was posted in as well as the year and also the document number. The document number over here for sure depends on our document type. So when we post a financial document we select the document type and based on this document type a number will be issued by the system. So this information over here so the ledger the company code year and document number with those information you can clearly identify any document in the system. Then you can see here we have one and the same document with multiple line items. So meaning that this table stores all the document information per line item. Let me actually show this to you. So if we now go to transaction code slash OFB03 or in Fiori it would be the application called manage journal entries. Let me actually make it a bit smaller over here. And if we then search for this document, so this number over here, the company code, and also the fiscal year is 2017 and we click on continue. You can see exactly this document over here and you can see this document actually consists of eight different line items and over here you can see the line items two up until eight. So all the positions actually posted in AC Doc A table. The first position over here is in this case the vendor so it's directly posted to the vendor and can be viewed via the reports for our vendors. Let's go back to the table and scroll a bit to the right because those are here technical information. Then you can see here the different currencies, quite important. As you can see, we can store one and the same document in several currencies. As you can see over here, we have the balanced transaction currency. We have the transaction currency. So these here depend on what you actually insert in the financial document when posting it. So for each and every document, if we take a look at the one we just inspected. You can see over here we have a currency and this is exactly what is stored over here. Then we have the company code currency. So this is the currency that is assigned to our company code, meaning that for instance, if you post a document in US dollar, but your company code currency is Euro, then this document is posted in both US dollar and also Euro. Then we have the global currency. It's also called the group currency, which is used to compare amounts in a single currency. And then we have here the functional currency, which specifies the currency 
of our primary economic environment, meaning that normally the functional currency could either be the company code currency over here or also the global currency or even our own currency type if necessary. Quite important over here is that this functional currency is the same for all the ledgers in the company code and is defined on the leading ledger level. By the way, if you want to find out more about ledgers, I have a separate video about that. I will link it in the description of this one. And by default, as said normally, the functional currency equals our company code currency over here. So we only use this functional currency if most of our business transactions are in a currency that is different from our local currency. So from the currency of our company code, then we could store also a deviating currency over here. Last but not least, you can see here eight different freely definable currencies. So meaning that if your business needs require an additional currency, we can configure our own currency types over here. And this means that we can actually post one and the same document in our transaction currency, our company code currency, global currency, the functional currency, and up to eight freely definable currencies. Okay, let's go to the right. Over here, you can see the unit of measure, the different documents we are posted in, also the account number. So here we are talking about the general ledger account, the financial transaction was posted to the cost center, which was used and also the profit center. By the way, I have separate videos also about cost centers and profit centers. I will leave them in the description of this video for you. Then we have the functional area. This is only filled if the company utilizes the so-called cost of sales based accounting. And of course we have a controlling area. If we scroll to the right a bit, you can also see the segment, which is used for the IFRS accounting principle. And then if we go further to the right, you can also see over here, the different amount. So the amount in transaction currency in this case was filled also the company code currency, the global currency and the functional currency we have been talking through before. You can see here, our freely definable currencies are not used for these documents, so they are blank as of now. If we go further to the right, over here you can also see possible price variances. When it comes to those columns over here, this is important for, for instance, parallel valuation, which is possible in SAP S4 HANA Finance. I will leave you a link here in the description and I will also make a separate video about that in future. If we scroll a bit to the right, you can also see over here the moving average price in the local currency, also in the group currency, and the same also counts for the standard price. So here we are talking about the two price valuation methods used in SAP, especially when it comes to material valuation. Okay, further to the right, quite importantly, over here is the indicator whether a position is credit or debit. So as you can see, the H is for credit and the S is for debit. Then we have the period the document was posted in, and also we have the fiscal year variant, which is for sure assigned to the company code. I also have a separate video about this topic. I will leave it in the description. Then we have the posting date. So when the financial transaction was actually posted in the system, the document date and extremely important also the document type. By the document type, we can distinguish our documents quite easily. And also they will receive a different number based on the document type. Over here, we have the posting key. In a normal SAP S4 HANA system, you don't necessarily need to manually insert the posting key in many transactions anymore. Only if we emulate certain GUI transactions to Fiori, which I've also shown in another video. However, each and every transaction is for sure posted with a certain posting key. 86 in this instance, if we take a look, would be a GR IR debit. Okay, if we go further to the right, we can also see over here the transaction. This is actually used for certain account determinations so that the system determines the general ledger account based on this transaction over here. We have certain user information. And then over here, we have the GL account type. So X, for instance, here means a balance sheet account. We could also have a non-operating expense or income account. We could have a primary cost or revenue account, which is simultaneously also really important under SAP s hana as all of our cost elements are now also general ledger accounts. So if I define one of my general ledger accounts with the GL account type P, we also need to assign a cost element and also then it's mandatory to assign a cost object when posting any financial data to this account. We have secondary costs, which are for sure still used for distributing costs from one cost object to another. And we have cash accounts marked 
with C. Then we have over here the chart of accounts that was used also to determine our general ledger account for sure. And if we go further to the right, we can even see here a related purchasing document to this document over here, the material that was posted to and the plant information. So you can see really here the connection also to the material ledger information. You can see here the account type. So in this case, it was a GL account. We could also have assets, customer vendor or material. In those cases here, we will talk about reconciliation accounts. We can see the tax code. And if we go further to the right, you can also see the price determination from materials management. So this table has so many different columns because it stores the information of financial accounting, it stores the information of controlling, it also stores the information of our material ledger, it stores the information of our profitability analysis, it also stores the information of asset account and accruals management. So all of this information is pressed, if you want to see it like that, into this one table over here. This is why we have so many different columns. If we go further to the right, you can also see over here the valuation area. This is used to determine the general ledger accounts that are triggered if we post information in materials management. You can see the offsetting account and the offsetting account type. Here you can see further cost elements like work breakdown structures if needed. And right at the end of the table, you can see a data aging filter. So if documents are already marked for data aging, they would have a date over here. And that's basically it. This is a full overview about the most important columns in the AC Doc A table. I hope you liked the video. If so, then please subscribe to my channel and also activate the bell. See you next time.